Before I start this story, I just want you to know that it's for educational purpose, and I mean no disrespect to anyone that I talk about in this case, and I upload once or twice a week. Suzanne Louise von Richthofen was born on November 3, 1983, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Suzanne is the daughter of the German engineer Manfred Albert Freiherr von Richthofen, and his wife, Marisha von Richthofen, a Brazilian of Lebanese descent. Her father was working as a director of the state company for highway development in Sao Paulo, her mother was a psychiatrist. Suzanne has a younger brother, Andreas Freiherr von Richthofen, born in 1987. Her father claimed to be a grandnephew of Manfred von Richthofen, German war pilot of World War I, but this is still disputed, the German von Richthofen family denies any link to them. After graduating from a German high school, Suzanne studied law at Pontificia Universidade Católica. She was described as happy, but a little shy. Suzanne was known to have a good relation with her parents and her brother. In the summer of 1999, she started practicing Brazilian jiu-jitsu and that's where she got to know Daniel Cravenhos de Paula e Silva, who became her boyfriend and accomplice of the murder. The Rick defense had a declared net worth of $5.5 million. However, prosecutors suspect that two anonymous accounts in Swiss banks, containing at least 10 million euros, were opened by Suzanne's father in her name in November 2001, when she turned 18. Suzanne's father is thought to have embezzled this money from Dursa. Nothing prevents Suzanne from gaining access to the money after serving her sentence. Suzanne's parents, who at first allowed her relationship to Daniel Cravenhos, changed their opinion when they discovered that he used marijuana almost daily. Also, his lower-class background and his unwillingness to work or to attend school caused their disagreement. In July, 2002, her parents were on vacation, so Daniel moved in with the children for a month, much to Suzanne's delight. When the parents came back home, Suzanne suggested they buy her a flat in which she could live with Daniel, but her father refused, saying that she could do whatever she liked to only if she earned money herself. She continued meeting Daniel secretly. In the late hours of October 31, 2002, Suzanne von Richthofen, who had planned the murder of her parents for months, checked if they were already asleep, then disconnected the alarm system of the estate and opened the door to her 21-year-old boyfriend, Daniel Cravenhos, and his brother, 26-year-old Christian Cravenhos who had waited outside. The Cravenhos brothers went upstairs to the parents' bedroom and hit them with iron sticks before strangling them with towels. Suzanne was waiting in the living room downstairs. After the murder was accomplished, the three youngsters simulated a break-in by pocketing money they found, spreading papers in the library and creating a mess in the house. Then they left, Suzanne and Daniel went for a motel, Christian went to a fast food restaurant. Early in the morning, Suzanne and Daniel picked up her little brother, Andreas, then aged 15, at an internet cafe and went home where they discovered the crime, called the police at once and told them their story. The investigating officers, however, doubted a burglary crime and thought of someone familiar to the victims, soon began to question the children and the employees of the Richthofen family. What made them suspicious was not only the crime scene, with the alarm system switched off and the papers spread very regularly, as if by design, but also the extraordinary coolness of Suzanne, who was seen in the house's swimming pool with Daniel the day after the murder and who celebrated her 19th birthday with friends just hours after the parents' burial. The investigators focused their attention on Suzanne and her boyfriend and began shadowing them. The clue for the arrest came with Christian Cravenhos, who had bought a motorcycle a few days later and paid cash in $100 bills. A few days later, on November 9, 2002, he was arrested, as well as his brother and Suzanne, who soon confessed the murder. Suzanne claimed that she did all for love, for fear that Daniel would leave her if the parents were not killed. Her lawyer, Denivaldo Barney, said that Suzanne had no motive at all, but was forced to the crime by Daniel, whom she adored like a god. Another part of the motive may have been the parents' wealth, estimated to about $17 million, which Suzanne would inherit in case of the parents' death. As prosecutor Roberto Tardelli put it, Suzanne wanted to get her hands on the money and assets her parents had worked so hard to obtain, she wanted her freedom and independence without having to work for it. On trial, Daniel Cravenhos claimed that Suzanne was physically violated by her father, which she and her brother Andreas von Richthofen deny. 
It was also claimed that the Richthofen parents were alcoholics, but in the autopsy, no alcohol was detected in their bodies. The case generated significant media attention in Brazil due to the stark contrast between the brutal crime and the personality of the daughter. While the Cravinhos brothers fitted in the scheme of the uneducated, unemployed, drug-addicted killers, this was not true for Suzanne, she was a pretty, blonde girl from an upper-middle-class family of German and Lebanese descent, well-behaved, always doing well at school, speaking three foreign languages and doing ballet. The contrast between her affluent upbringing and the cruelty of the crime shocked the country. Also, as discussion emerged in the Brazilian public about the worth of family values and the effects of education, the question as to whether Suzanne was the evil mind behind the crime or just Daniel's tool was also heavily discussed. Many people who initially were emotionally on Suzanne's side changed their opinion when a TV interview with her was shown. Before the interview, when the cameras were already on, she was instructed for the interview by her lawyer. He told her to cry out loud during the broadcast to create public sympathy. In the outcome, however, the interview was a major blast for her credibility. In court, Suzanne still was very cool, while the Cravenhos brothers were crying most of the time. At one occasion, she even started to laugh. On June 5, 2006, Suzanne Freyan von Richthofen, along with the Cravenhos, was put on trial in Sao Paulo, for homicidio qualificado, the equivalent of first-degree murder in Brazilian law. The trial was delayed and finally started on July 17. On trial, Suzanne blamed Daniel Cravenhos for everything, while the Cravenhos brothers claimed that they acted upon her desire. Prosecutor Roberto Tardelli, however, called Suzanne the mastermind of the crime. Roberto Tardelli called for 50 years of imprisonment for each of the three defendants. She was described as personification of the evil blonde. On July 22, 2006, Suzanne was sentenced to 40 years in prison for the crime. Daniel Cravenhos got the same sentence, and his brother Christian was sentenced to 38 years for conspiracy. As of April 2007, she is in custody in a women's prison outside Sao Paulo. She stayed in custody for 16 years in the Penitenciaria Feminina Santa Maria Euphrasia Pelletier in Tremem, state of Sao Paulo, and was released on probation on January 11, 2023. She lived as a recluse in rural Angatuba, a city where her ex-boyfriend's relatives live. In February of the same year, Suzanne sparked outrage and media attention when she announced on social media that she was opening an online store and would be selling in Brazil. Suzanne is currently living in Berganca Paulista, and is in a relationship with Felipe Zacchini Muniz, a divorced local doctor who has three children from a previous relationship. On March 2023 Suzanne became pregnant with her first child and she gave birth to a son, Felipe, who was born January 26, 2024 in Sabin Hospital in Atabea. In December 2023, Von Richthofen changed her legal name to Suzanne Louise Magnani Muniz, where Magnani is her maternal grandmother's surname and Muniz is her domestic partner's surname. I hope you all have a great day today, and this is all I have for this case, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed please subscribe and comment and leave a thumbs up down below and thanks for watching once again.